You know, I was going to cut something out just now. I was going to cut out something, and I'm going to leave it in. Uh, I'm going to call this part two of the video, because uh, what I was going to say is that Scrooge was able to was able to find redemption, and he was able to get forgiveness because he had amassed all that wealth. And that when he found redemption and knew that he wanted to make it up to Bob Cratchit and, and make it up to his family and make it up to the world, he, he had the reserves that he'd worked for all his life. That he had wealth and was able to buy that big turkey for Cratchit and was able to give him a raise and was able to donate to all the poor people that he wanted to and was able to improve the world around him because he had the wealth and that if he didn't have the wealth, he would not have been able to, to do that, to be able to find redemption. But you know something? Um, I take all that back. I take all that back because it's not really important to the story. It's a side note that he had it. The the thing is if he I realize now that if he hadn't had have if he hadn't had had the wealth, he would have had something. He would have had something of value to his life to be able to gain the redemption and to be able to give to other people. If it wasn't wealth, he would have had knowledge. If it wasn't that, he would have had sorrow. He would have had something. There was something in his life to give to everybody else, whether or not it was the wealth. So, the wealth is an, an allegory for something that he had amassed throughout his life. Anyway, It was a story of redemption. And it is a story of redemption. And so let's talk about me. I was born really late in, in my family's life. I'm 15 years younger than my brother, and I'm 13 years younger than my sister. My, my mom had been told it was very dangerous to have me, and in fact... Um, they had planned on not having me. Uh, they had planned on uh, taking care of me. And uh, the story goes that the night before, uh, my, my mom was going to be going to uh, have me taken care of, um, which, by the way, is a perfectly valid thing. Um, in the middle of the night, my father... Uh, rolled over and punched my mom in the arm to wake her up. And she said, what, what, what? And this is the story she told me. He punched her in the arm awake. And she said, what, what? And he looked at her and said, I don't want to talk about this anymore. We're having this baby. And she was so grateful that she didn't have to go through with it because she really wanted to go through with it very, very much. She wanted to have me and she was very sad that she was going to be taking care of me. Taking care of it and making me go away. She wanted it and she wanted me and so did my dad. And so they risked it and, and it was very dangerous and I was born a C-section. And I was fine. But I was very late in life. And um, my parents were kind of old and tired and uh, my brother went off to college when I was an infant and my sister did a lot of raising of me she was she was fantastic my family was fantastic my dad was this really really dedicated doctor he uh, spent his life in family practice uh, at pretty much at the same office for about 50 plus years until his death um, he, he worked in, he worked on the office. He worked uh, uh, right not long after I was born. They moved from. Uh, they lived in the uh, the they lived in the building which was my dad's office. The uh, upper half of it was a house, and the bottom half of it was his office. Um, 
but they moved from the house uh, to about um, about five or six miles away. Uh, uh, there was a farm, an eight and a half acre farm. Uh, they they moved into this house and and um, this farm, and they they turned it into a farm. This, I grew up on this beautiful eight and a half acre farm. In uh, what started off as this uh, beautiful little house, and my father got into farming and he got into construction uh, by adding on to the house. Uh, slowly, he, he kept hiring contractors to work on the house, and he would work with the contractors, and he learned more and more about construction, and he built most of the house himself. He built, if the if the house, let's just say, you know, the, the house uh, uh, was one unit worth of house, the, the end of it, uh, there was about 10 units worth of house. He, he made the house... A mansion ten times bigger than the original house, and more grand, and with a huge and closed-in deck, and with a big sweeping living room that had a fireplace in the center of it, open on all, open on three sides, and a huge grand piano, and he built a huge waterfall inside the house. This big rolling working waterfall, this this water feature with a huge kidney shaped pool. It just and that was just the living room. He he made unbelievable things construction wise. My mom was this fantastic artisan doing all kinds of handicrafts with flower, beaded flower work and knitting and and incredible seamstress work and in art and my sister was incredible in theater and they had people over all the time they had parties over all the time it was just this fantastic artistic flamboyant wonderful wonderful playground for a little kid like me to grow up in with all the animals outside and with all the beautiful stuff inside just a a, a stunning renaissance gorgeous tapestry of of beauty and love and light and and I I mean I had no friends growing up I didn't really I couldn't really relate to anybody else my age I because nobody had experiences like I did and and I just I didn't go on play dates I didn't really have any social experience I pretty much was isolated on the farm you know, my, my parents didn't really have a lot of friends that they socialized with. I mean, we socialized with family. Um, but I don't, I didn't really get along with my family either, with my cousins. I have a lot of cousins and I didn't really get along with them that well either. Um, but, um, you know, and everybody else seemed to get along pretty well. I, I don't know, I just, I never really, I never really got along with them, and I, I got along with my sister. My sister brought home her college friends all the time, and, and, and they were in the theater. They were in Mason Gross School of the Arts. She, my sister was in the first graduating class of Mason Gross. They, they, they created it right when she was in Douglas College. So, um, so, uh, she was a pioneer, uh, and, and she brought over her theater friends all the time, and they loved me. I'm, I was, just an infant, but I was so into the theater, and and I knew I was, you know, four and five and and six and reading scripts. Um, I mean, uh, age wise, I was five, six, and you know, I was more than five. My my sister was in college, doing theater, and and um, so I was, I was reading scripts, and I was helping them with all their shows and I was running to get props to make sure everything was in place. I just, I loved all the stuff. I loved the singing and the dancing and, and I loved all the acting. I loved it and they loved me and, you know, granted there was a lot of stuff going on, a lot of, a lot of sex and drugs. I mean, not that my sister was into uh, all the drugs and stuff like that, uh, but I mean, I saw it. I, I, I saw stuff go on and they, and, you know, they, they were, 
I guess I saw a lot more than I should have. But the point of being, I didn't really get along with kids my age. I never did. When I went to school, I was... And it didn't help that I was fat. So, you know, I didn't listen to the same music as everybody else. I, I, I was fat. I was flamboyant. I loved to joke all the time. I was the class clown. I, I loved... You know, and then when they were when there were shows, I got cast as the lead in a bunch of shows, and you know that was something. And then my parents wanted to make me; um, they wanted to show kids that I was special, that you know I was someone that they wanted. They wanted people to realize that I was someone special, to be appreciated and loved, and so. For instance, when it was, uh, when I was in second grade, um, I actually skipped second grade because I was really super smart. And I don't even know that I was super, well, I guess I was super smart. I mean, I tested out of second grade and I went from second to third. And, uh, that didn't help things either. So here I am, fat and different and younger than everybody else. Oof. It's school. They, they, oof. They, they ripped me apart. Um, my, my parents threw this unbelievable birthday party for me when I was in third grade. Uh, and they invited pretty much everyone from the second and third grade. They made it a school field trip. They had three buses, three or four buses worth of kids come from the school to my farm where we had a birthday party where they uh, had all these, uh, all the farm animals all decked out and, um, and you know, like a petting zoo for the entire school. And they had um, uh, the place made up like a circus. They had the entire mansion made up like a cir circus on the inside. They had my sister's theater people decorate the inside of the house like a circus. And my sister's theater friends were all clowns and entertainers and jugglers and uh, magicians and, um, and I was the center of it all and everyone was so thrilled to, to know me and everything. Uh, and, and we had a blast for about two weeks and then they started, you know, picking on me again, making fun of me again because I was, you know, this rich kid. Now I was, uh, the strange kid 